Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Erkin. I'm an otolaryngologist, head and neck surgeon. I'm here to talk to you today about the role of an ear, nose, and throat specialist in the management of people who are diagnosed with head and neck cancer. As otolaryngologists, we have expertise in examination of the head and neck, examination of the back of the throat, the oral cavity, the voice box. Patients will usually be seen by a primary care physician and then they may get referred to a local ear, nose and throat specialist who then recognizes what's going on and may start the workup or really establish the diagnosis before they get referred in for, um, for management by a multidisciplinary team. People who are beginning their journey in um, with head and neck cancer will often see me at the very outset or sometimes if they've already had a diagnosis that's been established. Um, it just depends. We're really right at the beginning of that process uh, most often. An individual coming in with a suspicion or a diagnosis of head and neck cancer when they first meet an otolaryngologist or ear, nose, and throat specialist, they can expect a consultation that will involve a series of questions, a review of their past medical history, an understanding of what other diseases, illnesses they have, because that's gonna to help to frame what their plan of care is going to be. When when they come in, we're going to want to see their slides so that from biopsies so that those can be reassessed and confirm a diagnosis. We're going to want to review scans that have been done. And at that first encounter, the ear, nose, and throat specialist is going to examine that patient in detail. That may be involve looking in the mouth. It may um, certainly will involve pal what we call palpation or feeling the neck. And uh, more often than not, there will be an exam done of the back of the throat by passing a tiny camera through the nose that goes down to examine the, um, the back of the throat and the vocal cord area. Once we establish a diagnosis, then what normally happens is that that patient will be presented to what we call a multidisciplinary tumor board. And present at that tumor board are all of the various disciplines involved in the workup. So a head and neck radiologist, a head and neck cytopathologist who will comment on the cell type, a pathologist who has experience in head and neck who has looked at a biopsy, um, radiation oncologist, medical oncologist, a speech and swallowing specialist who has hopefully met with that patient and understands what type of function they're coming in with. The establishment of a plan of care involves many different disciplines. People with head and neck cancer who require surgery as either their initial treatment or in the salvage setting if they require surgery for recurrent disease, it's a very detailed conversation. People coming in for an initial consultation who are going to undergo surgery, probably the most important thing I could recommend is to bring at least one other person along who is going to be another set of ears, who's going to be able to understand and ask important questions that in the moment are very difficult for um, someone who's about to undergo this to truly comprehend. I think that the other part of this is that it's probably more than one conversation. It's the first one is, as some of my patients refer to it as shock and awe, that they are just overwhelmed by the news and make it very difficult for them to understand what's about to happen. And often, that requires a second and sometimes a third conversation to truly understand it. Follow-up appointments um, after treatment involve a similar type of experience where they're gonna undergo follow-up exams, review of scans, 
and really sy symptom assessment when they come back after treatment. Um, there are unique aspects depending on what the nature of that treatment was. If the treatment involved major surgery, that takes us down a pathway where we're gonna be interested in their functional assessment. At the outset of a journey, when they are a, pa a person has either been diagnosed or suspicious for having a head and neck cancer, it's important to talk to the people in their community who they know, um, namely their primary care or um, someone else who can refer them to a, a specialist who um, has expertise in treatment of head and neck cancer. The entry point to that team of people is usually through the otolaryngologist or ear, nose, and throat specialist. They can also find information online um, that can be very valuable. And there are societies and websites that can also help in that journey. I think for patients to be organized and to really be strategic um, in making sure that everything gets done and they become their own advocates or they have somebody who's working as their advocate. I encourage patients to keep a folder and to insist on getting records, everything down to a CD that has their imaging studies with, on it um, you, and pathology reports and radiology reports. All of that is really important. People with head and neck cancer are inspiring every single day. I often marvel at how much individuals are capable of enduring, but at the end of the day, there is just an incredible amount of fortitude that is required that shines through. If you or someone you know has been diagnosed with head and neck cancer, it's important to understand that we're in this together that you're not alone. Together, we're made of more.